Okay, in this video we're looking at VAR and the controversy surrounding it in recent weeks. Now, the origins of VAR, we have to go back to the World Cup playoff in qualifying between Ireland and France, where there was that deliberate handball by Thierry Henry that led to a goal that eliminated Ireland from World Cup qualifying and allowed France to qualify for the 2010 World Cup. That World Cup also is the reason why we have goal line technology. With the Frank Lampard goal against Germany for England, that was but wasn't. And again, both these incidents affected the outcomes of games. Both was winner-take-all games as well. Now, Goal Line Tech, within three years, FIFA had put some investment into it, trialled it at the Confederations Cup, and by the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, um, that was, the, obviously, that World Cup is the start of the next season, um, rolled it out to 100% effectiveness. The Goal Line Tech works brilliantly, and there are no complaints with it. Absolutely none. It works flawlessly. Like cork eye in, in tennis and cricket, it works nearly perfectly 100% of the time. FIFA got it right there. They knew that there had been multiple instances where balls had crossed the line and goals hadn't been given. Uh, or phantom goals that the ball hadn't crossed the line had been given. So they, they knew that they were under pressure. And England-Germany won the, you know, the biggest international rivalries in, in the sport, which attracts the most viewers for TV. Uh, it had an outcome on that game that was negative. Uh, and uh, it did affect the game because that would have made it two all, and that would have if the scoreline stayed like that, gone to time and penalties and peak TV audience and money for the old FIFA. In the end, England lost the game four one, but they were convincingly outplayed by the Germans. But it had a, d a direct impact on the game at that time with the momentum swing. Had that goal stood, the momentum has swung and it changes the outcome of the game possibly. VAR, however, takes a further three years in development plus a few trials in some domestic leagues in 2017-2018 and then a World Cup to be rolled out. So it took even longer to get VAR to where it is now. The 2018 World Cup, I did a lot, I've watched a lot of games, I think I only missed two games in that World Cup. Uh, I did a lot of reviews and VAR comes up in a lot of the match reviews. So if you're new to the channel, check out my 2018 Football World Cup videos. You'll hear me mention VAR a hell of a lot in every single one of them. I think 90% of games it was involved in and the success rate of VR, VAR in that 2018 World Cup was actually surprisingly really, really good. Uh, it was a 90% success rate, I believe, on getting decisions correct. No system is 100% accurate. There's going to be errors every now and then, even with a pretty well-oiled system like, uh, like Hawkeye in tennis. There's going to be faults somewhere. But in the 2018 Men's World Cup in Russia, it worked pretty well. There were just two key areas where it could have been improved. The length of time taken to get the decision and letting fans at home on the TV and in the stadium know what was going on. Other sports that have some kind of video or technology based uh, support to the on-field or on-ice officials, the on-ice or on-field officials will be mic'd up to the whole stadium and the TV audience and will let them know that they are looking at a replay or they've been told there's an incident they've missed by the video officials saying you want to look at this and you know what's going on. There's also announcements saying we're looking at the, the video replays. There's been an incident of foul play and offside, etc, etc. Football didn't do that. That's the two main flaws in the VAR system as of a year and a half ago. Then they have another full season of trialling it with the same remit. Missing clear and obvious things, offside, handball, you know, just making sure. Reviewing red card decisions, that kind of thing, a mistaken identity. We know what the remit is. There's a fair few things that VAR looks at. And it's working okay. There's a few teething issues. But you expect that with a new system, right? Last summer comes along in the Women's World Cup. Now, they brought in some rule changes. And they also slightly altered the remit of VAR. Since then, it's been a backward step. And the system hasn't worked. Again, if you've watched the channel long enough. And you, you followed the Women's World Cup last summer. You will notice that the VAR didn't work effectively at all and missed a hell of a lot. And with the changes to the handball rule and the interpretation of what is and isn't offside, uh, VAR has been affected by that. The handball rule was now changed. If the ball hits your arm anywhere, from your shoulder to your hand, it's handball regardless if it's deliberate or accidental. Um, therefore, with the change in the offside rule, which any part of your body is past the last defender, if it's your arm, what is the point of having that? Because from here downwards, you can't use this to control the ball. So therefore, if this is past the last defender, this technically means nothing. But according to the offside rule, you're offside. You've gained an advantage. But you can't touch the ball with this hand, or this arm, at all, 
because it's a free kick or a penalty to the other side, regardless of where you are on the field, right? It depends where you are on the field, right? So, that's the flaw in the, the offside rule, and VAR is making some really silly decisions. If your arm is past the last defender, that's not an advantage, because you haven't got that head start, you've just got your arm there, but your feet are clearly the other side of him. How that's an advantage, I don't know. Because you cannot put the ball in with your hand. Unless you're Diego Maradona. Or Thierry Henry. Handball in the box is normally... Yeah, yeah. You, you don't score that. You get punished for that. Jokes aside, you don't get an advantage, right? So we've seen in the Premier League a lot of really bizarre decisions. And fans are ripping their hair out. And... There's got to be some common sense refereeing here. But they're going by the book that they've been given. You have to give this decision. And the lack of flexibility as well is causing a problem. And we, we have to look at the fact that is the offside rule correctly worded? And is the interpretation correct? The handball thing, I think, is the right way to go with handball. Just just make any contact with the arm or hand a handball, deliberate or accidental. Just say you can't touch the... It's like, it's like basketball with a foot foul. I think we have to have that rule. But the offside interpretation is a joke. And with VAR as well, the level of officiating is not good enough. There are too many mistakes in what should be a very simple system. So in 2018, when they're trialling the system at the World Cup, and it's actually going really well, all they had to fix was the length of time to get to a decision and allowing fans in the stadium and players and coaches to know what's going on. And at home. That's all they had to do. They have overcomplicated it because it's FIFA. Then they've also brought in another rule that has actually been flouted by some leagues, including our own domestic leagues here in the UK, is when a penalty is taken, the goalkeeper must stay on his line. But only in, a, only in normal time or extra time. If it's in a penalty shootout, he can come off his line. So that rule's flawed. The FA have said, we're not going to enforce that rule in our domestic leagues. Even with VAR, not going to be enforced. There was controversy at the Women's World Cup again with that rule. Um, so... Many goalkeepers got booked and many penalties had to be retaken, again delaying the game. So the flow of the game is affected. It's so again, we go back to 2018, the length of time to get to a decision. So a lot of games had a lot of added time because of VAR. And if you look at the last two World Cups, both men and women's, both have been affected by VAR. The men's game, mostly positive, but again, as I say, some teething issues that they could have improved on. The women's game, actually it was a really bad advert for the sport. Because if that had been the Men's World Cup with these changes, people would have been ripping their hair out and it would have made more news headlines than the Women's World Cup. That's probably why FIFA chose the Women's World Cup to tinker with the rule book, which was a mistake and has damaged the image of the women's game. But now, for those complaining about VAR now, because of the Women's World Cup with these trials that they did, is now affecting mainstream games right now. And the consequences could be huge. So you look at the Premier League. Liverpool... Without VAR, if VAR wasn't a thing, we'd only be six points ahead of Leicester. Only six. They're currently a few more than six points ahead of Leicester. So they would still be leading the Premier League, not by as much. So yes, they, it's had a positive impact for them. Norwich, on the other hand, while they would still be in the bottom three, they wouldn't be as far adrift. They've had goals disallowed because of the bizarre offside rule at the moment with VAR interpretation of it. Uh, they've had goals disallowed. If there was no VAR, if we go back a few seasons, uh, and this, you know, they would probably be equal in points with the other clubs around them, or very close. Their points adrift at the bottom at the moment. So at both ends of the table, VAR is having an impact by positively and negatively, and it's becoming a, a, a it's becoming farcical to the point where it's now become an online meme. Fans don't take it seriously. Fans who are really looking forward to VAR, trying to fix all the bad refereeing, are now go turning against it very, very quickly. And if you can't get your fan base, or if you can't get you know the fans on side and listen to their concerns, then the system isn't going to work. If you can't get basic support from your fans, let alone the players who've been critical of VAR, like Charlie Austin, for example, when they the FA refused to trial it last season. Until this season, he kicked off in a post-match interview because both teams involved in that game had lost out on points because of VAR not being there and saying the officials clearly need help. He got fined for that. We've now had a Norwich player kick off about VAR. He's got fined for it. And and, and so players are getting critical of the system. Managers have been critical of the system. 
experts, the ex-players, the pundits, the media, are very critical of the system. Now, I think having video assistant technology is a great way to go. But I'm surprised football have taken so long to implement it, considering other sports which have less money have invested and actually got their systems pretty good. Consistency could be an issue, but they are there and they're there to stay, and they they are, for the most part, supported by fans and players alike as, as part of the process. And every season they review all the decisions, the mistakes, the successes, and they try and make improvements with you know constant dialogue. Football, they're just making a mess of this by not implementing it correctly. Leagues can choose what rules they pick and choose that they can put in that they're going to check on VAR, what they're going to enforce. And it's very haphazard and very ad hoc and very reactionary to a problem. Rather than constantly giving feedback and, and, and liaising with everyone and all the stakeholders in the game, it seems they're just not doing it right. Did football reach out to other sports that have video technology or, or technology assisting the officials and go, how did you get through your teething problems? What would you advise us to do? Because this is a lot of money on the line and, and, and clubs could get promoted and relegated from leagues because of VAR. You know, FA Cup finals or World Cup finals or Champions League finals could be decided by VAR. The amount of money at stake here is, is huge uh, for the clubs. Um, so they have to get this right, but I can't see how they're going to do it with the way that the, the sport governance is doing it right now. But place your thoughts below on VAR. My viewpoint is, I think 2018, they had it nearly right, and they've gone backwards. Do we have to go back to, to the, what the rules were in 2018 with the offside handball and, and, and what VAR's remit was then? Or do we rewrite the rule book to suit VAR? That's an interesting one. I'm going to leave that there. Thank you very much for watching. It's been an interesting discussion point, and I expect the uh, comment section to get a little bit heated. I have no doubt, but thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe, place your thoughts below, and I'll have some more videos for you very, very soon.